out of the airport and I got a text from Mike that says, hey, you know, I'm already here. Where should I pick you up? And I was like, oh, great. This is, this is cool. I, I wonder what he's going to be driving or, or uh, what he was going to pick us up in. But we walked out and there was the, the Toyota with the LS swap there with, with his dog and everything. It was great. It was like perfectly California. So we, uh, we hopped in the car with him and uh, drove right over to his shop and, you know, there was, there was the 911 just sitting there. So when we got to the Stanceworks garage, uh, I was more focused on the 911 than anything else, I think, because it was something that I knew, it was familiar. And then I realized where I was, and I looked around and I saw, you know, sitting in the corner, there was this super low, super gnarly looking uh, E28 Rusty Slamington, you know, the Rusty Slamington that everyone knows from the, from the, from the post, from the thread about how it was in a fire and everything like that. And I think a day later, uh, I was talking to Michael Burroughs outside the shop and I was saying like, man, that's the loudest car I've ever heard in my life. I was talking about something and he goes, he looks at me with this very like, I know what I'm talking about sort of face. And he goes, Rusty is the, the loudest car you'll ever hear. And he just starts walking over to it. And I'm like, are we actually gonna hear this? And he's like, we'll fire it right up. And uh, I point out that his, his he didn't have a radiator cap for it. So he was like, oh, I'll just take it off the Land Cruiser. So he just goes over, grabs it, pops it on removes all the stuff that was sitting on the uh, on the trunk and he fires it up and we all have our like our live streams going on our phone my life is about to change <laughs> he pulls it out into the front of the shop and it's just like dip, 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 just like this angry sounding thing and uh, and he he looks over to me and he he does this and I'm like why is he, I, I guess I can shoot closer to the car to get better sound, like that's what I was thinking. So I walk a little bit closer, didn't really acknowledge, you know, what was going on fully, and then I hear him go, get in! And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so I, I, I pulled this door open, it's just like a thin little piece of sheet metal, and it was like waving when I pulled on it, and uh, pull the door open, the exhaust, the side pipe is right there, crawl into this steel or aluminum, all metal, kirky seat, and I have my phone just like sitting there and I'm like, I'm, I'm just still recording. And I look at all the switches and the, the relays that are, are, you know, tech screwed into the sheet metal and there's no firewall. The exhaust header is right there by my feet. I actually melted the tip of this shoe right here. And he gets on it in first gear and then into second gear and all the cars are whizzing past and I'm just like, holy shit, I'm gonna die. Like. <laughs>
was one of those moments where your your my brain stem was like get out of this situation try as hard as possible to just leave this situation and i was like nope i want to be doing this because i'm nuts <laughs> that was an experience i will never forget and i just can't thank him enough that was amazing Mike and Andrew asked uh, Alex and I to do some film work with them for uh, Nitto Tire and some of the off-road stuff that they've been doing. If you follow their blog, you've, you've definitely seen it. And uh, we, we decided we were gonna go up to Big Bear and do some film work. I'm like, great, this is gonna be awesome. Woke up super early, um, drove out of the city, which was actually a really, really nice drive out of the city. And uh, actually we went, we went quite fast on our way, on our way to meet them over there, I think. I think that would might have been the fastest I've driven the car ever. Holy fuck. But it was I mean it was probably 5:30 in the morning. There was no one around. I think it was either Saturday morning or Sunday morning. But we uh, we were really hauling the mail on, on the freeway there on the way over to visit Mike. And once we got there, we headed we headed out of the city and went up towards Big Bear, which is where we were going to go off-roading. And it was there that I, I realized that the car had no power. And it was like this increasing, debilitating disease that the car was acquiring. This elevation was like a disease. I have a lot of power. Yeah. But I'm like, man, is this is something broken? Did I break something? But uh, we made it up there all right, and we did the film work that we, that we needed to do, and it, and it was beautiful. Um, being out there and doing the off-roading stuff with a bunch of those guys was a lot of fun. So it didn't really feel like we were on a journey until we left Big Bear. And I wasn't really prepared for what it was gonna be like to leave Big Bear and drive, um, I think it was four and a half or five hours to Monterey from there. Um, and as we started going down and down and down, the temperature started going up and up and up. And uh, we ended up stopping at this little, little gas station and I asked the woman, I'm like, how hot is it right now? Cause I didn't have any cell phone service. So I'm like, how hot is it right now? She pulled out of her, she's like, it's 98 or 90. I don't remember if it was 98 or 99 degrees. And um, the car was hot. And I think it had a little bit to do with the temperature, but I think a lot of it had to do with the, with the elevation that we were at, the air was thinner. So we were definitely lacking on some air density with the cooling. So I remember one time we just, um, we were just cruising down this, this flat de uh, descent. I mean, it was probably, six, seven, eight miles, just continually flat, gradual descent. And we just, I just put it in neutral. And we just coasted down the whole thing and the car cooled off like 30 degrees in that time. But uh, it was, I mean, it was stifling, stifling hot, very, very hot. That was the hottest part of our entire trip, I think. I don't think there was any point where I, in the whole trip where I was uncomfortable, but I mean, that was, that was sweaty, sweaty, hot. I mean, I'm, I was, I was thinking at the time, if the rest of the trip is like this, it's gonna be a rough trip. The most beautiful place I've ever been in my life was next to this oddly graffitied rock in Arvin, California. It ended up being one of the most beautiful places on the entire trip. Maybe just because it was so unexpected. And I was like, man, sunset's coming. We gotta find a spot to shoot because this is beautiful. And we ended up pulling over and like, ah, this stuff hot doesn't work, this spot doesn't work. And you start to panic because you, you know, like the, it's all in your head, but as closer the sun gets to the, you know, to the horizon, you know, it just all of a sudden it just blinks away and it's just gone. You just blink and the sun is just gone. The sunset was perfect. And I remember starting a, li a Facebook live stream uh, and seeing all my friends pop up in the little thing. And, and my mom popped up and I was like, hey mom, this is the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. Thankfully, since I'm a giraffe, you can see way more of this than it, you usually could. And I remember just like looking across the huge expanse and just thinking, wow, this is really going to look 
amazing on camera and probably be one of the most memorable things I will have ever shot uh, out, of, out of my camera. And it turned out to be pretty freaking spectac spectacular. started driving over there, um, I started to see Alex wake up. Um, we're driving and it was Hurricane, Hurricane, Mercy Lago, GTR, and Alex is just like, wow, 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 wow. And I think it was finally starting to, because I'd been, I would been, I was pounding into his head. I'm like, this is going to blow your mind. You are going to lose your shit. You have no idea what this is going to be like. And this is after being around Alex at Road America and a few other things and hearing him go, wow, this is amazing. And I'm like, dude, you have no idea what we're both about to experience. I hadn't experienced it either, um, but I kind of knew what was coming. And I think one of my favorite parts of the trip was watching that from Alex, is seeing his reaction and his eyes turn into saucers or dinner plates or serving trays. Oh my god. This is this is it for me. <laughs> There's definitely a lack of 356s at this event. There's so many. It's like, yeah, cool dad alert right here pretty much. Chris likes this car. I like this car. I'm always right. Yo, I heard you like 356s, so we made half of this entire Monterey car week 356s. They're sinking the carbs on this right now. 
This is pretty wild. There's a lot of people here. I saw this parked on the street last night. Just there. There's there's four engines on this car, and every and single one is supercharged. Supercharged. There's also yeah, oh yeah. See, there's four blowers. Yeah. I've realized a lot of a lot of Porsches. I need to be dressed better. Pretty much the end of it. We're done. That's it. It's adorable. Dog. Oh, she goes up the top. Oh my god. It's actually not that short. Mole, mole. Let's come around on the map. Do you just do this for uh, for fun, or do you sell these? Or no, I don't sell it. But if you want, I'd love to give it to you if you have a space. Bro, just gave me this drawing. That's really really cool. I have no idea what that car is, but I have a pretty it's sick Allard. drawing of it now. It's a what? Allard. Allard. Sick. We left the house and started driving to Dan's Drive, which is a, a get together of Porsche enthusiasts that go and drive through some of the some of the roads just around Monterey. Pulled in, bunch of nice folks, got to take a look at some cars. A singer showed up um, and was there for a little while. Um, there was I, there was a bunch of stuff. Some some of the cars had engine swaps or some hot rods. Uh, it ended up being a being a great trip. Once we left on the drive, the car that I ended up being behind was a 2.7 RS which was a beautiful, I had a beautiful view of that thing. We were carving through these roads at a pretty rapid clip. You know, some of the roads were really bumpy and they were off camber and there was some gravel around. So the roads were kind of dangerous, but you had the trees that were overhanging and uh, you're kind of driving through the tunnels of these trees on these narrow roads where if anybody was coming, I mean, that's it, it's over. So, I mean, that was, that was a dangerous, and a very, very rewarding experience. It's rather difficult to hold the camera, um, but this is amazing. We're trailing a Carrera RS right now, which is behind a turbo, which is behind a whole bunch of other fast Porsches, and we're having quite the time. What do you think of it so far? It's absolutely gorgeous. I was, uh, I was saying that these rock chips that I'm getting from this Carrera RS are probably making my car actually worth more money instead of less. So we'd heard a lot about uh, Baja Cantina from the guys on Dan's drive. They said, you gotta go to the Baja Cantina, you gotta go there. We're like, all right, well, we'll just go check out whatever this is. And you gotta, gotta take some advice from the people that have been there before, because there's so much to do that you could easily do something that's, you know, if it was in Minnesota, it'd be like a 10 out of 10 cool, but in uh, California, it's probably like a four out of 10 cool, when the Baja Cantina is like a nine out of 10 cool. So it's like a sliding scale of how cool things actually are. Um, but we went to the Baja Cantina, check it out, and it was pretty cool. Uh, we saw uh, a Rimac there, and we were we were just driving, and Alex goes, 
holy shit, that's a Rimac right there. And uh, we rolled down the window. I was like, oh, this is, ah! you know, just, I don't remember what we said. It was probably just blathering nonsense. But the guy was like, sweet 911. But we also had um, just a good time walking around and being told you can't be here or there. You know, once we got over by uh, by the quail, where the quail was gonna be, oh, you can't go any farther than this. But, uh, you know, just we, I mean, we saw a BMW CSL race car. We saw um, tons of Porsche stuff. We saw a Chiron drive by. Um, I mean, there's there's more Lamborghinis in that area than you can than you can even count. I mean, you can't do this fast enough for all the Lamborghinis that are driving around. Um, that's a pretty special spot as well. This is just the stuff you see when you go to lunch at Monterey Car Week. Here in my garage with my Lamborghinis and my other Lamborghinis. It's all fine. Yo, I heard you like Lamborghinis. Oh my God. So it has two engines and four blowers. Alex. Take it down later. We'll just, we'll just take, we'll down. take this building down later, but for now, <laughs> just, we'll just put it right here. <laughs> this is from Petrolicious. It still sounds poopy. It still sounds poopy. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know how many times I'm gonna point the camera at myself and say this is crazy, but this is crazy. I heard you like brakes. Oh, I brought 10 piston caliber. So I've come to the realization that this entire event, Monterey Car Weekend, is like standing underneath the shower and turning the shower on and having every awesome car come pouring out of the shower head all over you all at once and you're basically drowning. That's, yep. I take that back. Actually, it's like being waterboarded <laughs> by every awesome car ever and I'm drowning. Speaking of being waterboarded by amazing cars, there's just a Chiron pulling in. It's fine. Magnus Walker. That's Magnus Walker. So I'm getting a couple photos together just to send Chad to show him what I've seen in the last five minutes. And I've already got taken like 30 photos. Most rare car here is definitely this clean S13. I can't even think right now because my brain is so overwhelmed with cars, so we're just gonna rip it past the whole thing in a 911. Well, you think you are, you? Don't bottom out on this. Yeah, what it really is. Yeah, that was just, that blew my mind. It was legend after legend after legend. And then following that, the, the day at Laguna Seca, the first thing I saw when I walked in on the sort of foggy overcast morning was you saw this big gray car cover and underneath it, this green and orange livery that said Renown on the side of it. And the only time I'd ever see that car is in a YouTube video when I was like 14. And just seeing crazy stuff like that. Interscope car, Hawaiian Tropic car, old Ferrari race cars, it just blew my mind.
So when you wake up in the morning in Monterey, it's always foggy. And I wasn't, I kind of hoped it would stay like that throughout the day just for photos, but uh, the fog eventually lifts as the sun burns off all the moisture. But we got to Laguna Seca and it was still pretty, pretty foggy. And uh, I wasn't sure quite what to expect. You, you drive up to Mas Laguna Seca and it's way up on this, on this small, I don't even know, it's not a mountain, but it's bigger than a hill. So I don't know whatever that's called. But you get up there, you park in a really, really dusty parking lot. You walk a million miles and uh, you get there, you walk into the paddock and it's like the best novel you've ever seen just being opened up right in front of you. And you can, it's like you're reading all the pages at once. Everything you've ever wanted to see in terms of vintage uh, motorsports is there from every manufacturer, from BMW to Lotus to Porsche to Ferrari. I mean, everything is, is, is there. Um, you, you can't walk 10 feet without going, wow, look at that millions of dollars right there. And I was there shooting for uh, Porsche. I was shooting Adam Corolla's 935, which was owned by Paul Newman, the Hawaiian Tropic car. Very, very special car. Um, I almost couldn't shoot it. There were so many people just around at all times. Uh, There's just really popular car at the event that day. And one thing that I never really expected was all the elevation changes around the track as well. And when you finally see the corkscrew in person, you realize how um, barely surmountable that is on, with a race car. It is, you could take an elevator down and be just about as going straight down as you are on, on, the, on the corkscrew. So that was really impressive to see that. Beautiful track, beautiful cars. Um, couldn't have asked for a better day at Mazda Laguna Seca. crazy which sucks and it has a little bit of a misfire we thought it was because of the altitude change earlier when we were at Big Bear but it's still persisting and we're only at like 150 feet of elevation now so we're trying to get that looked at hopefully everything goes well because sticky caliper would not bode well for us in the mountains so we were driving in the Mojave Desert on the way back from Big Bear and uh, when we got into Monterey I noticed that there's a little bit of a misfire in the car so I called up CNC and they told me to bring the car over here to have them take a look. And uh, hopefully this is the issue, is a lot of the plugs, the uh, connector is loose. So hopefully that fixes that. And uh, we also had them take a look at the brakes before it gets super squeaky. And I uh, found out that uh, the pads are actually really old. There's some old race pads or whatever. So we're gonna get new pads put on the front, get new spark plugs in, and uh, hopefully that takes care of some of the issues we've been having. Idle though. Meanwhile, I'm trying to find a car to buy, maybe. I really want an i3 or a Z3M coupe. Those are two very different things. Uh, but, but, we'll see how it goes. 
looking for the Z3 coupe has reached uh, comically epic proportions. Yes. Um, we've, I, he's probably shown me probably 15 of them. Yep. I think. Everything from, well, this one's a salvage title. It's only $6,000, but doesn't shift in a second or fourth gear. Well, that this. was the one. That one I actually drove, and it was not good. But now we're potentially looking at one in San Francisco if the guy calls back, if, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Which I really hope he does. I blew up a fan belt when Chris was doing a skid. So this is the remains of that, Mike Burroughs. Thanks for uh, making this into a bracelet. One of the days I set aside for us to go visit Canapa and San Francisco. I thought Alex might like to see the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and I wanted to see the apartment that I, that I had when I went to college out there. So we left in the morning, drove up to uh, Santa Cruz to find a Santa Cruz sticker for the car and uh, also to visit uh, Santa Cruz, the, the beach there, take a look at some of the, you know, some of the amusement park stuff and, you know, just cruise around the, uh, around the, on the boardwalk, cruise on the boardwalk there and just take a look at things. Really cool, really cool place. Um, we also stopped at Canapa, which is just a playground, essentially. Uh, it's a playground for people that love, you know, Porsches and vintage, vintage race cars. Um, 917s, McLaren GTRs, GTR. Uh, it's just, the stuff that's there is just, it's just unbelievable. Um, old 911Rs, Urquatros. I mean, there is just everything you'd want. I, the whole trip was everything you'd want to see, but Canapa was a really, really special place. I mean, there was, I could count probably on two hands how many 959s there were. Because of course there's two five. Oh God. <laughs> Holy shit. Let's see. 959, Countach, M1, 959, Ford GT. Jesus Christ. 300 XL. 935 oh or something. That Interscope car? Yeah. Holy shit. The Triumph Stud. It's wonderful. This is so funky. Like, what? Holy cow. Audi Quattro Coupe. RS 200? 2000? 200. 200. There's five 959s here. Actually, seven. So there's two in the other room. <laughs> so sorry, check the previous figure. Eight. Eight 959s. So far, who knows? There could be more. Bugatti EB110. Let me go to San Francisco.
Lombard, Lombard, Lombard Street. Lombard Street. Lombard Street. Lombard Street. So we're chilling by the Golden Gate Bridge. It's pretty sick. The Golden Gate Bridge is like literally right here. And Chris is messing with his little phone holder deal and he pushed a little bit too hard and unseated the whole windshield seal over there. Uh. So now, <laughs> so now we have uh, pretty scenery and a windshield that's popped out. Just 9-11 things. Or he does this again and pushes too hard. Oh, now he's learned he's pushing his other hand against the outside of the windshield. Oh, fuck that. We did get it back. We got it back in. We had to take the dash cover off. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> well, he's like right next to the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> nice. We're good. So we are at the works reunion, and it is the, uh, we're gonna go look at a bunch of 996s. It's gonna be awesome, they're stock. Here's one, two, three million of them over here. And uh, if you look in this direction, you see the porta potties over here. In the direction right there is a blue one, and like a bunch of gray ones. And then past that is a bridge, and then past that is a giant fairway. And then past that is a bunch of SUVs and uh, marketing vehicles, and that's, that's where my car is. But that's okay, I mean, if you look in this direction over here, there is a, a Carrera 4, 996, black on black, black convertible, and uh, uh, right right kitty corner to that is a silver 996 with a black top. It's a rare option. They probably only made 76,000 of those. So, uh, yeah, it uh, should be a great time. We got in. Well, it's a fancy parking. You wanna know how close I am to losing my shit on this trip? How close are you to losing your shit? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! We are at uh, RM Sotheby's. We're gonna try and get into the auction. 
Um, so they just have a bunch of cars lined up here that are pretty sweet. There is a old Countach, there is a Diablo, and a uh, Maserati that's pretty cool. So it's uh, and this thing. Good. Fantastic. And will the telephone be a stand 2100 for original miles? Only 281 examples were built. Offered by I really hope owner. one of those this is an extraordinary miles, opportunity going to be. this evening. <laughs> So we left Monterey on our way back to Minnesota, which was, I think, ended up being 2,300, 2,400 miles somewhere. And we decided to take the Sonora Pass, versus, which is the northern route over the Sierra Nevada, Nevada Mountains east of Monterey, rather than the Yosemite route, which is the southern route. Probably a little bit of a more beautiful route, but I figured that time of year in August, uh, it was gonna be full of tourists and people towing things. And when I looked up what the Sonora Pass was like, it was, 27 or 26 percent grade super dangerous be careful you could die if you drive on this your children that are 2,000 miles away might die i mean it was it, it just it, it had this air of of difficulty and that was kind of attractive to me you know the fact that it was so dangerous that you weren't supposed to have trailers there so we get up there and sure enough there's the signs it's, it's dangerous here look out be careful and uh but we went obviously went through it with it anyway and the you, you go over the pass and you get, we got to the other side, pulled over, and it was absolutely stunning, to say the least. After the Sierra Nevada mountains, they, you come down and you head right into Nevada. And one thing that I didn't expect is that I thought when you came down the other side, you'd be at sea level again. But we were still at four or 5,000 feet. I mean, it was, it was incredible. I mean, I thought once we hit the desert, that was sea level. Just in my mind, being ignorant, I didn't know. So I expected to have all this power, you know, for the rest of the drive, but um, no, I didn't. I was still down on power. And it doesn't make the, the, the car unfun but uh, it definitely impacts the experience a little bit. But um, we ended up driving, I, and I was looking at the map with Alex, and I'm like, well, why don't we go here? It says extraterrestrial highway on the map. I'm like, that sounds amazing. So we, we drove through what was the extraterrestrial highway, and we pull over, we saw this sign that just says extraterrestrial highway, and it's covered in stickers. And uh, Alex ended up putting a Pelican part sticker on there just to kind of to, to mark that we had been there we got it from some of the parts that I'd ordered in California. Three Pelican parts, We're saving our asses, getting us a fan uh, belt and a wrench and some other stuff. Oh, Pelican parts. Installed. It's installed. What? Alex, it's the alien. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> that was a pretty cool experience, as was visiting uh, Area 51, which was a very short visit. Um, in hindsight, I've seen other people spend quite a bit of time there, but I was pretty nervous about it. So we went and visited the back gate of Area 51 for about uh, three tenths of a second before we turned around and, and peeled out of there. Uh, down like a 10 mile gravel road is the longest gravel road, the nicest gravel road I think I've ever been on. Government gravel is pretty nice. This is the back gate to Area 51, road to the back gate. Nice. So is the whole back half of the car. We found a dirt road. Chris is having a lot of fun. How was it? That was fucking awesome. <laughs> I knew that we were gonna be pulling into Utah and I had, we had been driving through Nevada on these straight roads and I was just so bored with it that I wanted to give Alex a wonderful welcome to Utah. Welcome to motherfucking Utah. Hell yeah, looking sweet. <laughs> We tried doing a couple uh, high-speed runs out in the middle of nowhere, but the roads aren't quite as smooth as you think they are. It might have been because the car was pretty overloaded, but right at about 120 miles an hour or so, which feels pretty fast even out there, the car was, you know, was sketchy. And it was probably because it was jammed. The front trunk was jammed. We were in it. Right behind our seats was full. Um, so it didn't feel quite as nice as I thought it would. Scenic Highway 12, the All-American Road. I love that. Can you hand me my phone? We gotta text him. On the on the little sign that says, we're not here. Thanks for staying with us. Please call this number. So we'll try. This is a good sign, right? This is great. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice message. Hi, we need to stay at your place. <laughs> we got a lady. We got a lady. Okay, so we were just, we were out on this, we went to film, uh, we went to film in the dark. So we took the drone out and we drove up this twisty ass road to uh, get some beautiful shots. Um, here they are right here.
finally got that done, we went to this overlook point to take a look at the at the stars. I'm like, fuck, we got like thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment. Why don't we just go ahead and try and do some night shots? So we dicked around with it for probably about 20 minutes, and I finally set my camera up on this ledge and hit the exposure. I was doing about a minute and 20 second exposures. And I turn around and I look up on the hill. It's probably like a, maybe a 50 to 75 foot cliff, and there's no joke, glowing fucking eyes on the top of the cliff, and they're walking down the cliff in my general direction. And I freaked out. <laughs> and I said, Alex, there's something on the ledge. <laughs> it's gonna eat us. I gotta turn the car on. So I start screaming everything I've seen in the in watching TV. I'm like, hey bear, hey bear, hey, hey, hey! And I started the car up. And I revved. And Alex revved the engine up a little bit. And I went and I grabbed all my shit. We could have been eaten by probably a possum. <laughs> I don't know. But his head looked about this big. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> The most common question I get about this trip is why? Why did you go on this trip? And the answer wasn't really known until afterwards. Uh, we, ended up, we ended up driving almost a thousand miles in California from Los Angeles and driving around and going to all the car week stuff. And we ended up in San Francisco. So there's a thousand miles there and then another 2,400 miles or so home. And the, the title of the film is Der Vegas das Ziel, which is uh, the route is the goal or the journey is the goal. And, but we didn't really know that when we were driving it. We thought we were just, we were just in something. But after you do something like that, you, you see that you've really completed something. Um, you've completed a task. You've, 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 you've shut the door on something that um, you wanted to do more after you did it than you did before you did it. It's comfortable, it drives great. It's really given us no issues other than your door. <laughs> and, uh... Man, this thing's driven us over 3,000 miles so far since we left Los Angeles, and here we are at 11,312 feet at the Continental Divide. I think that's pretty fucking awesome.
all of the experiences um, and the friendship that I that I grew and cultivated with Alex is something that will be with me for the rest of my life. I know that the nostalgia is going to continue to exponentially grow, but I'll but I'll be able to pick out some of the really special moments and some of the beautiful places that we saw, and uh, it'll be something that I never never will forget. <laughs>